Hey everyone, welcome back. Today we're gonna to talk about longevity. We are gonna talk about our skin and the possibility of reversing our age as far as our skin is concerned. This is really, really exciting science. I have been down the rabbit hole of the brand One Skin and whether or not you care about another skincare product, I think you should care about this science and I think you should know about it. So that's what we're gonna to do today. If you are new here, my name is Penny. I am a master esthetician in Portland, Oregon. I do hope that you will consider subscribing and I also hope you'll consider joining my private skincare group over on Facebook. It is a wonderful atmosphere where people discuss skin all day long in a really empowering and encouraging kind way. I will put the links to all of my socials in the description box. I hope you'll check them out. This video would be probably eight years long if I went into everything that I have learned over the last several months. So I'm gonna scratch the surface here today and hopefully pique your interest and then I'm gonna direct you to the blog. Today I posted a blog post that is super duper extensive that covers in much more depth all of the things that I've learned or most of the things that I have learned. And then there's also a frequently asked questions section where there's lots and lots of questions that I believe that if you have those questions, trust me, I had those questions too. So that's all over on the blog if you are kind of, you know, a skincare nerd like me. Okay, so let's get into it. First of all, what is aging? I think it's really important to understand like what, what's even going on as we age. Basically, we are accumulating damage as we go along. And unfortunately, when we get older, we're less efficient at clearing the damage. The damage kind of takes over and there's a tipping point, right? When we're really young, we're damaged. We get damage from all of the things, from UV, from pollution, all of the things that are damaging us now damaged us when we were young. We were just really, really good at clearing that damage as it was happening efficiently. As you get older, unfortunately, there's more damage than we can fix. We're less good at fixing it on a cellular level. And so that accumulated damage winds up in or results in aging, right? And, and not just our skin, of course, I'm talking systemically, our organs, everything, everything about us is kind of a slow degradation over the course of our life. So one of the hallmarks of aging is something called cellular senescence. Now, before you tune out, it's really, really a very simple thing. Senescence is just old. In fact, I wanna to read to you guys, Merriam-Webster, the dictionary, right, says senescence can be traced back to the Latin word senex, which means old. <laughs> that simple, right? So when you talk about cellular senescence, you're just talking about aged, old, degraded cells. That's what's happening with cellular senescence, okay? So you take a good cell, right? And it's going along and it's aged out and perhaps it's even at the point where if it continues to replicate, there's a chance that there could be cancer or something like that. The body's way of defending us against that, one of its defense mechanisms is to turn that cell into a senescent cell. The reason for that is once a cell is senescent, it can no longer replicate. And cancer needs to be able to replicate to grow. And so once that cell is senescent, it can no longer become cancerous. That is the body's kind of you know defense mechanism against things like cancer. Now that's fine in that moment. In that moment, one senescent cell isn't a problem. In fact, senescent cells to begin with have some pros. They actually send out some wound healing signals. They've got some positives to them. But when you get a bunch of senescent cells together, that's when we have issues. And that's what happens as we age. We get an accumulation of these senescent cells. Now, the other thing that happens that's really, really important to understand is that these senescent cells secrete something that kind of just bleeds into other cells. And when there's too many of these, that kind of senescent soup that is, you know, seeps out kind of infects the cells around it and makes those cells senescent too. So it ages and makes those surrounding cells also old. So you can kind of get the idea. As you accumulate these senescent cells, they kind of beget themselves. They 
they spread and make other cells senescent. The secretion that the senescent cells put out is also inflammatory. And if you've been here for a little while, you know that inflammation is aging, especially long-term inflammation, it is aging. So you can imagine the more that they secrete this stuff that causes other cells to become senescent, the more those cells can secrete the stuff that makes other cells become senescent. And you can kind of see where it becomes, it, it begets itself. It really is, the, pro the problem really is too many senescent cells. So the important kind of three properties of senescent cells is number one, they no longer divide. That's kind of their point to begin with, right? They're, they're supposed to no longer divide because it's kind of the body's defense mechanism against cancer. Number two, they secrete that, that goo that is called SASP. It's an acronym, you guys, and basically is it is a senescent kind of stew that they put out, and that is the thing that can affect other cells and cause them to become senescent. And then number three is that they never die. They actually sit around like zombies, not able to replicate, but also not able to die. So this is why over the course of our lifetime, we can accumulate them and then that becomes the problem. So what can we do about those senescent cells so that you can maybe reverse age because less senescent cells in aggregate means you will have more youthful skin. It's so, so important to understand the problem in this case so that we can understand why we might want to fix that problem. Because I think that if you just hear cellular senescence and you don't understand it, you might be like, yeah, whatever, it's just another thing. But it's actually the thing. To me, it's the thing. And it's not just about skin. It is the hallmark of aging in general. And because it is one of those things that builds on itself, then if we can kind of stop that in its tracks and reverse it a little bit, you truly could see where you can reverse aging. The best way that we can manage senescent cells really from the get go is by preventing them in the first place. So things like wearing your SPF or not smoking, having a lifestyle where you actually have a decent diet, managing your stress, there are other things that can contribute to healthy, you know, non-senescence or the proliferation of senescent cells like intermittent fasting and things like that that we can discuss in future videos. So there are definitely preventative measures for managing senescence. Number one though, when it comes to skincare is your SPF. For sure, I know that people get tired of hearing about that. Just did a video about SPF. Find yourself one you like and wear it. I promise you it is the first line of defense and it is the thing that can be super duper inexpensive and is the most effective anti-aging tool that we do have in our arsenal full stop. Okay, so now that we understand senescence and the way that we age, enter in the One Skin team. Now, first of all, I have to say that it's basically the dream team of four women who are wizards. They're absolute wizards. We have Carolina Reese, who holds a PhD in immunology and tissue engineering. We have Alessandra Zanari, who has a master's degree in stem cell biology and her PhD in skin regeneration and tissue engineering. We have Mariana Baroni, who has a master's degree in biochemistry and her PhD in bioformatics with an emphasis in genomics. We have Juliana Carvalho, who earned her master's degree in biochemistry and immunology and her PhD in molecular biology. The founders of OneSkin have co-authored over 100 papers relating to aging. This was the team of people, women no doubt, who were able to figure this one out. Okay, so how did they get to one skin? First of all, they had to start with a ton of peptides that they were gonna have to sift through to see if any of them would actually address cellular senescence. And could they find something that could topically help with that? So the sifting began and they started to search. Out of the 200 that they were looking at, they ended up with four. They used an algorithm that helped them to kind of assess and eventually they came down to two peptides, OS1 and OS2. They tested it and they tested it for its effect on cellular senescence and eventually OS1 won out. That is the peptide that is in their product. Now, in order to find the best of the best, they had to test this on 
both human skin and then on something called human skin equivalent. Now, the really cool thing is they actually grow their own skin and they don't just grow their own skin like um, always a baby skin. They can actually grow skin that is a 48 year old woman and they can test on it. And because they can do this themselves in their own lab, they are able to test and iterate and iterate and iterate until they get it perfect. They can actually apply all kinds of things to the skin and create a skin with a certain set of parameters. We want 72 year old skin that, you know, has been exposed to UV, et cetera, et cetera. And then they can test it. The testing that they have done on one skin is extensive. Now it's also important to note that key tests have third party validity. So it's not all just in-house testing. And I think that that's really important too. So testing upon testing upon testing with this really innovative human skin equivalent, and then also some third party testing. So if there's anything here, it is not a lack of testing. They've also tested lots and lots of other products on the market and put them to the test to see if they improved cellular senescence, if they improved barrier function, or if they improved you know, dermal or epidermal thickness, all of that stuff. I, I highly suggest you checking out the blog and that you do a deep dive on this one too, because I think that everyone, once they look into this, will be pretty impressed with the science. Even if you don't ever wanna use this product, the science is awfully impressive. The next thing that they did that I think is pretty fascinating is they developed a way to test the age of the skin. They called this the mall clock. So, you know, molecular clock essentially. So they're able to actually use a DNA based measure to find out the age of skin. This is super important because they can take their human skin equivalent, that skin that they have in a dish essentially that is human skin equivalent. It's not just cells in a dish, it is human skin equivalent. They're able to test the age of that so they know, and then they are able to do the stuff that they want to do to it, and then they are able to test it again. That is their mall clock. That in itself is innovation, amazing innovation to be able to actually tell the age of the skin and test and retest and really find out if the product that you are trying to produce actually will get the skin younger. I mean, these are tests that are important for, you know, both positive and negative. This is how they know that one skin is able to reverse aging in skin. And they have made the mall clock openly available so any company is able to use it. So OS1 is the first ingredient proven to reverse skin aging by limiting the accumulation of senescent cells. Now let's talk about OS1 because it's a peptide and my very first question was, well, how does it get in? Like, how does that work? That question and the answer is on the blog because it's actually pretty in depth, you guys. The size of the peptide is larger than 500 Daltons. So any of you skincare nerds out there are going to be like, wait, We've talked about barriers so many times that we've talked about how things can't get in if they are over 500 Daltons. Well, that's awfully simplistic. And what I have learned is that that is not the only factor when it comes to penetrating our skin barrier. We know from other products that encapsulation can help with, you know, and penetration. So we know that when things are liposomal, they can penetrate the skin barrier, even sometimes when they are larger than 500 Daltons. So that's part of the magic of the way that OS1 is able to penetrate into the skin. But more than that, the team at OneSkin has tested, they know, they have proven that OS1 actually is able to get in and get where it needs to go in the dermis, it is happening. So it isn't just a hypothesis, it's actually, they've actually proven it. OS1 also helps to lower inflammation. And again, we all know that inflammation is aging. And so OS1 is anti-inflammatory. It can greatly help with reducing inflammation. Part of that is because senescent cells put out that inflammatory kind of gunk that, you know, infects, for lack of a better word, the other cells around it. That's inflammatory. And if you get rid of some of those senescent cells, there's less inflammation just because there's less of that gunk going out that is inflammatory. But OS1 also helps to reduce inflammation in other ways. Another thing 
that OS1 can do is that it actually can help healthy cells not become senescent, even in the presence, even in the presence of other senescent cells. So like I said, once these senescent cells, these old cells start to get together and they start to seep out their evil goo that affects other cells and causes them to become senescent zombie cells also. And then this is like a domino effect OS1 actually helps kind of protect those healthy cells so that they don't become senescent, even if they're surrounded by other senescent cells. It's like, you know, a zombie protection or something, right? So it's helping to stop that kind of bleed of senescence from infecting all kinds of cells, but keeping some of the healthy ones healthy and not infected. So it's really twofold in that way. The products that they have come out with, they've had their face product that you can use on your face, on your neck, on the back of your hands. They've had that one out that was a flagship product. And then recently they came out with a body product. I have to tell you on my second bottle of the body product, it is one of my favorite body lotions that I have used and putting aside the skincare aspect. It's super silky. It leaves your skin looking really radiant and really moisturized and hydrated. It looks beautiful on the skin. I actually love to mix it with my self tanning drops and use it as my self tanner, not just as an anti-aging lotion. It's got some really, really wonderful ingredients in it that help with hydration but it also has the OS1. So if you are someone who is working on your decollete, working on your arms, that kind of thing, it's a really, really great body lotion. Now the face lotion, of course, is going to be um, seriously more concentrated in OS1, partially because our face and our neck and our hands are far more exposed over the course of our lifetime to things like UV damage. So they need a higher concentration of the peptide. So you get a lower concentration in the body because you don't need as much in the body on areas of your body that got less UV exposure over our lifetime, which UV exposure is one of the things that contributes greatly to senescence. It just does. We know that and we know that protecting ourselves from UV damage is kind of key in anti-aging. Finally, looking forward, one skin body is actually being tested as to whether or not it can help with systemic inflammation. So kind of the theory is because the skin is our largest organ and if the body product can affect senescence in our skin, in our largest organ, and it can lower the inflammation. And so we lower the possibility of those senescent cells bleeding out into the rest of the cells of the rest of our body. Can the OS1 in the one skin body product, can it it help with systemic inflammation. So we're talking inflammation beyond our skin. I think the promise of that is incredible because truly inflammation is one of those things that we all know is a hallmark of aging as well. It is one of those things that affects us internally, affects us health-wise as far as the longevity of our actual life and our internal organs. So if there's something that we can do topically that might be able to help us internally, wow, I think that that's pretty cool. I hope that this video was helpful. I hope that it piqued your interest. More than anything, I hope that it gets you to go over to that blog and read that blog post and really sit down, grab yourself a cup of coffee and just take it in because it is exciting science. If you're here, you're a skincare nerd and you're into it, go check it out. You will love it. I hope that you have a wonderful rest of your day and I thank you for being here and I'll talk to you in my next skincare video. Take care.